We've been spending a lot of time in our office talking about the use of data in the future of travel marketing. There's a lot of players like Facebook and Google have gathered a lot of data about travelers. We want to make sure we understand how that can be deployed into the marketplace. So we invited Terry Jones to join us, of course, the founder of Travelocity, the chairman of Kayak when it sold to Priceline. And of course, now he's started Wayblazer, a company that promises to change contextual search and travel. So we're pleased to have Terry join us and talk to our panel about what he sees uh, in the future of travel and travel data. So Terry, I don't think we've, uh, we've talked since Focusrite a few years ago. I think it was right before you uh, sold Kayak and you were on Brands of Travel at that time. We're glad to have you back. And, and I think, you know, we, today we really want to talk about localization and personalization and the things you're seeing in the business. And I, I didn't really feel qualified to talk to you by myself, so I brought along some friends from the company. We've got Robert Patterson with us today, Lucas Cobb, and Claire Bishop. Those guys are going to join me and we're going to be able to just have a discussion about what you're seeing. I think I'd just start with what you're seeing in the travel landscape. It seems to us that not a lot has changed since 2008 when Meta really became a prominent player. There, there doesn't seem to have been a big sea change in terms of the way people are shopping and booking, but I, I wonder how you see it and what you're seeing playing out over time. Well, there's, there hasn't been a big change in booking, obviously, uh, except the consolidation of the players with Travelocity and Orbitz becoming part of Expedia, Travago going over there, Priceline buying Kayak, many other things, TripAdvisor snapping up uh, restaurant reservation sites. So a lot of power, a lot of consolidation uh, of marketing dollars, um, but not much change in the way you book. I guess I'd say I see TripAdvisor going back much more heavily to booking. Uh, it's getting harder again to find reviews on TripAdvisor, uh, but also a pretty good integration there of Viator. So you know it's, it's clear that they want to sell you more products uh, per trip and yet not only hopefully the air and hotel through their meta introduction, but also restaurants and ancillary services. How do you see that data being leveraged in the way these platforms might emerge in the travel planning space? Well, you know, we're still swimming in a sea of data looking for wisdom, right? It's, it's still very difficult. I think people haven't leveraged it the way we, they should. Um, gosh, at, at Travelocity 10 years ago, we had 40 million names, and we enhanced all that data with data we purchased. And I think that was one of the best things we did in building the brand. You know, I worked on the original team at Advantage. They have amazing data, but they have so much dark data in all these companies that they don't exploit. So I think there's a lot of room. Um, in so many travel sites talk about it, very few actually do it. I don't think anybody's found the golden fleece yet. It just makes me wonder, who are the progressive travel marketers now, or who do you see on the supplier side maybe doing some new things that might emerge soon? I'm, full disclosure, an advisor at Sojourn. Um, I think what they're doing is amazing. Because they, you know, they, they used to be the company that printed ads on your boarding pass, and now they get all this real-time data from pretty much every U.S. airline, I think, from, except Southwest and many international ones. And they know what you've been searching for, and that's key because in travel, if you want to do, you know, one of these follow-on ads, you really have to know that I'm searching for a party of four on June 6th to offer me a great price. And then once I buy that air, they're targeting me for hotel because they have hotel relationships. Once they do that, they're targeting car, they're targeting SeaWorld. Um, you know, it's not retargeting to me, it's, it's laser targeting. It's really interesting. Not seeing as much innovation personally uh, on the supplier side. My favorite airline knows that I sit in 4B, but they don't offer it to me. My favorite hotel chain knows I like a higher floor room. They don't offer it to me. Why not? They're just not getting it done, I think. Let's talk about Wayblazer for a moment. How do you see your new uh, model fitting into this, this future landscape? And What's the proposition of Wayblazer and how do you intend to uh, sort of activate against that? Well, Wayblazer is a company, one of the very first formed specifically around IBM's Watson technology, the, the system that beat Jeopardy, right? That won the game. And uh, they asked me a year and a half ago to see if it could be applied to travel. And so what we've done is taken all kinds of disparate data, Facebook data, Twitter data, blog data, article data, geographic data, booking data and put it all together um, to derive a couple of things. So for the city of Austin, 
Uh, we're allowing people to use natural language search. So I want to go to a, on a guy's trip to Austin this fall with my buddies, which is not a question you can ask a search engine, and give you machine curated results mm. and analysis that talks to you like a friend. So an insight around Austin might be, hey, if you're going to the Formula One race, which we recommend for guys going to Austin, sit on turn 15, don't drive on Burleson Road, here's where you can scalp a ticket. If you're going to go to music and you're going to go to emos, hey, you should know they took out all the seats. There's only bleachers in the back. Your wife in high heels might not enjoy it. Um, we, we've used this technology to be able to talk to you like a friend. So uh, we've, we've signed uh, a couple of big hotel chains that will be announced soon, um, one of whom is testing a concierge product. If you go to a hotel site today, you have to say city name, in date, out date. Well, maybe... You know, if I'm a strong customer of a chain or a brand, I want to say, look, I want to go in February to a beach with my wife and kids. It needs to have golf, spa, and great kids' activities. What do you got? You can ask that question with Wayblazer. You can't ask that question of any hotel site today. Well, well, Terry, I wanted to ask you, what data sources are you finding are providing the most contextually re uh, relevant recommendations? Well, yeah, I think it takes a broad range. We found some interesting stuff on Twitter. We found, you know, obviously very interesting things in reviews and blogs, which are helping supplant the traditional editorial sources. And where we want to take that eventually is a combination of wisdom of the crowd and wisdom of the expert. Because wisdom of the crowd may tell you, you know, what's trending now. Wisdom of the expert might tell you about something that the crowd has totally missed. How do you think consumers will react to that? I think as consumers who've used Google, for instance, for years and years and years, we're used to trying to be very precise with our searches. Have you done any testing with, with user groups or any research that speaks to how to change that behavior? Or is it going to be a natural thing? Once you start asking questions back, we surmise, and we're just about to test this, that people will get into a conversation with a machine and understand, particularly if you supply them real-time results, that each time they answer one of those questions, they're moving down the funnel and getting answers that are more focused on what they really want. How does that work for the supplier then in the case of Austin? How much of the data that's served back is actually their, their product data or is it more of what has been sourced from the broader web? It really depends on the client. Obviously in our hotel clients, mm -hmm. almost all the data is from the hotelier, right? Now, mm -hmm. we're working, for example, with some hotel, I call them hotel marketing brands, you know, where they, they bring together independent hotels. There, we're able to add a lot of content by scraping the individual hotel websites because we oh, have an unstructured okay. database and we can do that. Uh, most of them have trouble with that, so we can actually enhance their data. We've discussed with hotel chains and we'll see how far they go. We'd love to add <laughs> social and reviews. We don't have to add negative reviews. But if, you know, 100 people, if we have 100 reviews that say you have the best spa in town, why isn't that on your website? So, Terry, Wayblazer is very, obviously a very forward-thinking company. How do you imagine uh, the, the evolution of the Wayblazer product within mobile? And then as we carry on even into five years and beyond, sort of the Internet of Things. Obviously, one of the things that's so cool about mobile is it knows, it knows a lot about you and it knows where you are. So in the beginning, I think we can, we can help consumers take action immediately based on their location, uh, what they're doing now. And, uh, you know, we've never been able to do that really before, right? Uh, we haven't had a device that could, that could do that. And I think the vision of that that many companies have is yet to be realized. Uh, uh, we hope that this cognitive profile technology you know, learning more and more about you and consuming data from the supplier about you will help us give that right answer to the customer at the right moment. And I think it's really important because particularly in hospitality, some of the major chains have announced, for example, you're going to be able to use your smartphone as your key to your room. Mm -hmm. Well, if you do that, you're never going to talk to anybody in the hotel. They better have a device like your mobile device. Hey, I pull out my key and it talks to me. It tells me things. Now I have an, a real reason to download that hotel app. I think mobile is key there. Um, to be able to actually know where the person is at a particular moment and what they're doing. And if they give you those permissions, uh, particularly 
you know, if if the hotel or the airline or the cruise line convinces them to sign in with Facebook, to give me the Twitter login, to give me their LinkedIn login, I give you some miles to do that because you're going to get a better result. Because I'm going to tell you when you land and turn your phone on that we just got a 2 p.m. tea time at the golf course that wasn't available before. And by the way, you know, we don't have sitters tonight, but we have them tomorrow night at the hotel or whatever it is. I think building those offers and getting people to think about ancillary revenue and marketing that ancillary revenue with their systems is pretty important. You mentioned earlier the loyalty programs and how you feel like the companies aren't doing a good job leveraging that data that they have on you as a, as a quality customer. Do you envision that being a hook for technology like you were speaking about, the concierge element, the upsell element, that you can engage people deeper because you know them as a customer and not just a, um, a leisure traveler, a general traveler? Absolutely. I mean, I, I don't, you know, those files are used today to give me miles, but they don't really give me targeted offers. You know, I, I should get an offer from somebody who knows, you know, of all the hotels and their brands that I stay in the luxury properties all the time. That's that's where I stay. Or, you know, hey, <clears throat> this is how I fly. This is where I, I fly. I just don't see that happening. Um, they They haven't really dug into the data in a way that certainly is possible. Why is that, do you think, Terry? What is it that's holding them up from doing this? They've had the data for so long and it doesn't seem like there's been a big change or shift in the way it's being used. Do you, do you have a sense for what the hurdle is? Well, I think one of the problems is frankly organizational. You know, at, at Travelocity, my CMO, my, Mike Stacy, um, complained bitterly about I, how the job IT was doing running our CRM system. And he complained about it so much, I gave it to him. And said, okay, you now run the CRM, you have all the programmers, you have all the analysts, it reports to you, but you have to serve the whole company. And, you know, then I, what happened was I got a passionate owner of the data who wanted to attract more customers and work very hard with that, but also had to learn how to serve other departments. And I think one of the problems is, having been a CIO, that a lot of this stuff is buried in IT. Uh, there are big debates about who owns the customer and the customer profile and what are we going to do with it and it takes forever and they don't have, you know, they don't burn the silos and put it in one place. Uh, I think you need to organize around the customer and plan your outcomes and then go after, you know, how am I going to do it? What do you say to the consumer to convince them what, what they're getting out of this by, by letting us have access to that information about them? I don't think you can say it. I think you have to show it. In other words, I think you have to demonstrate to them uh, in a demo in, hey, if you tell me this, you get that. You know, if you will tell me more about what you like, I'm going to refine this for you. And you won't have to go to 20 websites, which is the average travel customer does to try to find the stuff that's relevant for you. You won't have to read reviews. I mean, the problem with the web today is it doesn't give advice. Mm -hmm. And we think with Wayblazer, we can actually give advice. That's already happening in medicine. But to give advice, I've got to know about you. Terry, we, we asked Twitter uh, if they had any questions for you in, in Wayblazer. And Troy D. Thompson asks, uh, how do you create a shared customer empathy or understanding when technology is increasingly separating us from uh, the customer, from the employees who, who are the, uh, the service providers? Well, you know, that's something we did at Travelocity and at Kayak. Um, at Travelocity, I had a phone booth in the hall, which was basically symbolic. If you picked up the phone, you could hear customer service phone calls. And everybody in the company was required to listen to two phone calls a month and discuss at staff meeting two things. One, have we fixed the problem the customer called about? You know, to make our, so they don't have to call in the future. And two, what new ideas did you get from the customer? So I think you have to find a way to connect the customer with the employee and let them know what's going on. And they're talking about you. They're talking about you on Twitter and Facebook and email and blogs and all over the place. That data has to get back to the employee so they can't push it away and ignore it. And we have one final question here from Twitter from at Jackie underscore Barney. She asked, how will personalization impact uh, travel apps versus the responsive web? You know, for many products, I don't want their app. I just rather have responsive web. You know, I want to go there and get something. And I think 
people are going to have to understand that that the majority of travelers don't want to download apps for everything they do. I mean, I'll download apps for my top airlines. Maybe if I get a hotel key, I'll download my hotel apps. Most hotels haven't given me a big reason to download their hotel app yet. But they better all have responsive products as well because mostly that's how I'm going to consume them because it's just not worth it to me to download the app for you know a very short use. So I, I think Responsive web is just one more of these omni channels, and I'm sure we're going to invent more of them. That's why it's so important to sit back and look at the customer as opposed to the channel. And let's make sure in every channel we treat the customer the same way. We open all the doors and don't care about which one the customer comes through. We can't, and we can't control them. They're, they're controlling us. So we have to move as fast as they are uh, and give them a solution, not a channel. And I think that's a, probably a great place to end the conversation. I think we could probably all talk about this for hours, but we just appreciate you coming on and sharing some of the insights with us and with the people who will see this because it's, the space is changing so fast and especially around data and especially about the way that data gets activated. So we all want to talk about this more and more, but today was a great start and I really appreciate your time, Terry. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. Bye now.